Hello everyone and welcome to another royal reading. Uh, before I start this reading, let me just tell you that I am over on Rumble. I have set myself up over there. I will be putting a link in the description box if I can manage to do that. <laughs> Hopefully I can, but I am there as Mad World Tarot, all one word. Uh, there's nothing up there so far, but I have synced the two channels this youtube channel and my rumble channel and hopefully over time the uh, videos that i have uploaded here already will land up over there magically uh, without any intervention by me and uh, so let's see what happens and uh, that's a bit of housekeeping for you the light in the corner is the sunlight i decided to let it shine and i am using the tarot of the divine for this reading, it's a check-in on the Tour of the Caribbean, the Tarot of the Divine, and I'm using it because it's a world tarot deck. It's inspired by deities, folklore, and fairy tales from around the world. It is a very beautiful, and the back of the deck is this gorgeous blue, a very Caribbean blue. We saw a lot of it in clothes over there and uh, it's just absolutely fabulous so i want to have a look and see how the tour went from the cambridge's point of view they had their tricky moments uh, they went in with the best will in the world uh, seemingly they looked beautiful they behaved beautifully they were in some very awkward moments and very difficult moments and so i want to know how they felt it went individually william and catherine how they felt about each country in order of appearance, Belize, Jamaica and the Bahamas, how prepared they were for the trouble that they found along the way. Were they expecting it? Was this, were they taken by surprise by it? What impact did the haters have, the haters such as uh, uh, the mouthpiece, Megan's mouthpiece and uh, the rest of them? And the impact this tour will have on future royal tours, what effect will it have? Will they stay away from touring like this in future? It took a lot out of them, I think. They put heart and soul into it. And um, they, they took a lot of flack, really, um, for, for their troubles, away from their children. The royal family is clearly going to be changing um, in the near future in the way it operates. So I want to see, just generally, what the... Um, tarot of the divine uh, has to say about all of this a little I'm on a little nine card spread that's not little a nine card spread I have my list of questions next to me and uh, it looks so pretty I almost don't want to read um, and just get on a plane and go to the Caribbean instead and uh, who's come out at the bottom of the deck with the king of cups that's William and uh, so that's the king of cups uh, he's quite an interesting depiction, the King of Cups, because he's a serpent-looking creature. And all the mythology and the whatever is in the little booklet of the Terror of the Divine. I don't have time. It would be a five-hour reading if I went and explained everything to you and read from the little book. So we're just going to go with Rider Waite, King of Cups, um, which is... Uh, very emotional, uh, very in his feels, very intuitive, empathetic. And we know that from some of the speeches that William gave about the past, about the troubles in the world and um, part issues, slavery and the changing um, relationship between the monarchy and the countries of the Caribbean. It was very sensitively handled, I felt. And so that is the King of Cups. He's in the upright, so he's in his power. And his power, his strong point, William's power, is his empathy unlike the brother I have to get a mention there so uh, let's put him over there so he can sit there so he's really the the, the um, underlying energy of this reading it was really all about him as future monarch um, so let's see a signifier this is the top card a signifier for the tour as a whole from William and Catherine's point of view eight of swords in reverse I can tell you that they were very glad when it was over and they could go home the Eight of Swords is about being trapped. Um, it, it, it's, it's a hiding in a disguise energy in this card. And um, it's in the reverse, so it's getting out of dodge. Um, when they got on that plane, when they were able to uh, hew and uh, put down their masks, because it, it is really putting on uh, a different personality, a, a, a different energy so that they could get through it. 
enormously relieved um, that it was all over, that they got through it in one piece. It wasn't a happy experience for them, however, the brave, uh, whatever the brave faces were that they put on, um, it was all um, very, uh, a very huge relief that they got through it with as little trouble as they did, which is very interesting. So how did William feel it went? How did he feel through it? How did he feel about it? The Fool, and that's, um, that's an interesting card little pause there for the barking sorry about that the, we have neighbors coming and going at the moment so there's going to be noise dogs barking just unavoidable at the moment but the fool for prince william new start um it it, it really for him um, I think it was a new experience of being so on the forefront of all of this difficulty, but possibly learning from it and possibly thinking, well, I'm going to go out there. Um, I'm going to ask directly how prepared they were for the trouble that they faced. But it looks as if he's, he, he's exploring this and looking at ways that he can go forward in a new direction with these tours, with the monarchy generally. And we know that Omid wrote a very snarky little comment on his Twitter feed saying this was a chance for the monarchy to modernize and whatever, and not to shake hands through fences, chain fences and all the rest of it. Nasty little piece of work that he is, in my opinion. Um, but William clearly was looking at it and thinking, well, OK, this is what, wh wh how my future is going to be and I'm going to have to deal with it. But in a very positive way, the fool is a very optimistic energy. It's a very enthusiastic energy. It's OK, uh, I'm, I'm heading off into the unknown, but I'm heading off into the unknown in an enthusiastic and courageous way. I'm not going uh, creeping along all nervous and, and feeling guilty and, and, and hesitant. It's going boldly. Uh, like Star Trek. So uh, so that's a very, a very interesting card, Major Arcana, the zero card of the tarot. This is the, the new beginning, a, new, a whole new chapter for him, he feels. And he's shown up very strongly as the King of Cups here. So even though they were glad to get home and get out of Dodge, they are not um, being knocked back by this. Clearly not. Well, William isn't anyway. How does Catherine feel about it all? And uh, she's got the Hermit in reverse very exposed. Um, she likes to be private and retiring and she was out there. Um, the hermit is taking time out to think and reflect and look for inner guidance. But because the card is in reverse, and another little pause there for barking, sorry, uh, it's going to be a bad afternoon. Um, because the hermit is in reverse in this reading, she felt um, a little bit out of her comfort zone. She felt very um, conspicuous, everything, all eyes want, were on her and uh, it's also major arcana so she was less comfortable with it even though she looked absolutely glowing, absolutely radiant, confident. There were moments, awkward moments that have been picked to pieces by the haters. Uh, the body language guy has just done a video on that awkward moment. Well it looked awkward and the haters leapt in and said oh she pushed someone's hand away but of course there are going to be moments like this where it can easily be misconstrued and misrepresented and so she felt it. She felt um, uncomfortable and 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 exposed and possibly felt that she hadn't been prepared enough because the hermit is also expert help and when it's in reverse it is bad advice uh, maybe not getting the right advice maybe she felt that somehow she wasn't briefed well enough she wasn't prepared well enough for what was going on William is uh, is um, energized by this he's thinking okay well I need to work this out I need to figure out how I'm going to handle this in future and she's thinking I need to get better advice I need to be briefed better I need to be able to handle this better even though we looking on didn't see anything awkward about it at all but that is her feeling um, and she was really the one who was most put in awkward situations um, according to what I saw and I did not follow this um, diligently got the lots going on in my little world um, I, I, I saw headlines and I followed things that um, my usual uh, suspects have to say um, I go to for royal uh, gossip, shall we say. Let's look at country by country now. Belize was the first one. And uh, how did Belize go? The world, it was fabulous. They loved it. They were very happy. They felt it was very successful. The world is 
the happy ending card. It's very public. It's um, absolutely all eyes on them and they enjoyed it. They they felt that they would, they did very well there, that it all went very, very well and are very happy with it. The next card, of course, is Jamaica. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice along with uh, all the other nonsense that's going on as I'm trying to do this reading. Um, and in, it's got buried. <laughs> deeply under everything else and I just need to make sure that my cards stay in the right order they do this is the Jamaica card the one that's been buried how did they feel about this knight of swords in reverse stabbed um very vicious energy the knight of swords even when it's upright and this card came out in the reverse uh, it was brutal it was definitely brutal um, they felt that they were savaged by words um, unkind words, cruel words, vicious words, sudden and unexpected attacks um, that come with a Knight of Swords. Um, uh, the Knight of Swords always needs the trail of destruction behind him, in my experience, even when he's upright. That's my experience as a reader. In the reverse, he really can do a lot of damage, the Knight of Swords. So I think they felt particularly attacked, particularly hurt by the things that were said in Jamaica while they had to stand with the pain, you know, smiles plastered on their faces while they were accused and attacked. And allegedly there is a connection between the Jamaican Prime Minister and somebody at Archiewell. I can't remember the exact ins and outs of it, but the cousin, somebody's cousin, is the president of, or the Prime Minister, whatever he is, of Jamaica. So there is some link there that has been uncovered which adds to this feeling of hurt and um, surprise at being, being ambushed really with the Knight of Swords. That's the energy that the Knight of Swords brings when he's in the reverse. Horrible energy. It was hurtful. It was unexpected and uh, left them reeling. So uh, the Bahamas, the last country that they visited, how did that go? Seven of Cups. Um, they're not sure. They, it had its ups and it had its downs, the Bahamas. It's a card of of um, possibilities, the card of possibly being a little deluded about the possibilities that you have. Um, so they may feel that it looked better than it actually felt or that, um, it, it just there's something about it has given them pause with the Seven of Cups that maybe they were a little tired, maybe they, they were a little bit um, lackluster in the Bahamas because of everything that had gone on before and they just, um, it, it has this kind of confused and bewildered energy and I, I'm reading that as just being exhausted, that it was all a little bit much. There's, there's no catastrophe here with the Seven of Cups. Um, there is more the feeling that you, you're not quite sure how it went down. You're not quite sure how you were coming across um, if you were William and Catherine by that stage. Started off great with the world. Then there was this horrible moment in Jamaica that left Bahamas as maybe just a little bit too much for them. Uh, but nothing cat uh, catastrophic at all. Um, just maybe overwhelmed. That's the energy. That's the word that I'm scratching around for here. So how prepared were they for this tour in the sense of the trouble that they were possibly walking into? The Nine of Coins. Uh, it tells me that they were prepared, um, but maybe they were given the idea that they would be better received than they were. Um, because the Nine of Coins has this look of paradise about it, abundance. It is the card of being abundant, of being richly provided for, of being self-sufficient and you'll be fine, you'll do okay, you'll stand on your own two feet, don't need to worry about anything. That's what the Nine of Pentacles is all about. Um, you'll just, you'll be great. I think that they were told that, you'll be great, and then this happened that um, took them aback to the extent that Catherine is feeling like we really we weren't briefed about this because we were told it would be great. Somebody somewhere told them it would all be great, it would be fine and don't worry. I mean this really has this kind of um, uh, Caribbean energy, this this card, the, the, the depictions of it, uh, of that paradise and I was actually going to call this reading Paradise Lost and I think I'm going to, I'm going to change the working title that I've got scratched on my piece of paper and call this Paradise Lost because uh, I do think that they weren't uh, warned sufficiently of what may be uh, lying in wait for them there. 
And um, so what effect did the haters have on them? Um, the, the Omid Scobies of the world and all the rest of them. What effect did it have on them? Ace of Coins is new beginnings and new starts, but it's also a money card. It's a big money card. Um, I think that they feel that people were in it for a free ride um, to try try something, to try and start uh, problems, to score points and to, to, to gain, to gain financially, to gain status, to gain influence from them. It's not a negative card. So it's not coming across as being undermined by the haters or the haters being treacherous or anything like that. It's almost like jumping on a bandwagon with this ace of coins, with this, okay, here is the pentacle, um, the, the coin, and uh, it's for profit and for gain and for status and for a new path that the haters think that they are on. This is the future. Um, Omid Scobie keeps, keeps saying that this should be the future of the royal family. He certainly thinks it's the future for him. Uh, to be a hater like this and to be criticizing them like this. And they obviously, they're opportunists, in my opinion, and um, climbing on this bandwagon because they think it is the way forward for them. We've got major arcana of way forward here with the fool. So while they're thinking this, there, uh, the King of Cups is having his own thoughts about the way forward. And let's see what that way forward is going to be because this is the card, the final card, is what impact is this tour going to have on future tours that uh, William and Catherine in particular might undertake judgment in reverse. And uh, judgment is about decisions. It's about an awakening. It is about a second chance when it's upright. This is in the reverse. Uh, this is not going to happen again. They're not going to let this happen again, for sure. Uh, they feel that they were, they were badly advised. This was ill-advised. Definitely. Um, as I say, they put their happy faces on. They're too well-bred, too polite, uh, too considerate um, to show their true feelings about what was going on. But you can be sure with this Eight of Swords in reverse, when they got on that plane home, never, ever going to put ourselves through that again. We're going to find a new way forward with that full card. We are not doing this again. Judgment in reverse. It was a very bad decision. It was ill-advised. Um, there have been some incredibly hateful articles uh, in some of the British press uh, by people who really, really, really disliked the royal family and had a real go at them. And uh, they're not going to put their necks um, on the chopping block again like this and um, expose themselves and allow themselves to be criticised because judgment in reverse is about being criticised as well as being ill-advised, bad decision. Uh, never going to happen again when you get judgment in reverse if you're doing a reading and you want to know uh, whether this is going to come around again in your life. No, it's not. You're not going to let it come around again in your life. So that's a big card to end. Um, I think that there are going to be fireworks when they get back uh, behind the scenes. William has a temper. We know he has a temper, uh, particularly if Catherine felt exposed and vulnerable and um, uh, insufficiently briefed for what was heading her way. Uh, he's not going to take it lying down. Our King of Cups, he's going to have a lot to say about this when he gets back and when they debrief and when they go through it. And when they uh, decide how they are going to go in future. I just want to pull one card while I'm sitting here. This is the only reading. Well, standing here. I don't sit when I do these readings. Sorry, I just knocked the microphone. Um, I just want to pull a card for how the Queen feels this week. What did she feel about it? Um, about this tour of the Caribbean. Just generally, not about the Cambridge's performance. Well, okay, that one's flown out. Uh, Ten of Swords. Oh, dear. Yeah, she sees it. She sees for it, it for what it is with this Ten of Swords energy. It's an ending. It's a, it's a, a bad ending of something. The Ten of Swords, it's ruin, it's destruction, it's rock bottom, it's reputational harm. It's been stabbed in the back. Normally it's someone lying down on the ground, face down with their back exposed and Ten Swords stabbed into their back. She feels betrayed. She feels like the royal family has been very deeply wounded by this tour. It's been a body blow um, to her. Of course, the Commonwealth was uh, the thing that she um, really worked the, the hardest 
for in some ways uh, her, her legacy let's put it that way it's not the thing she worked hardest for but it's, it's viewed as her legacy and I think this has been particularly hurtful to her at a personal level this ten of swords the way the royal family has been rejected the way William and Catherine have been treated the accusations the attacks um, all of that she sees that there is an ending coming for this and there is more barking so I'm going to have to end this reading now and apologies for all the noise and I will see you again tomorrow.